guys, it's Jessica from Peace Love Books, and today I'm here with my top 10 favorite historical romances of all time. This list was hard, and I've probably forgotten some, but I have narrowed it down to 10 books, and one of them is a new read that you guys have no idea about, unless you follow me on Instagram, but I haven't talked about it at all and it's one of my new favorites, and I will save it for a little bit later in this video, but I have read a lot of amazing historical romances recently and in the past year, and so I don't know if I've done this video before, but these are just my 10 all-time favorites, and it was hard to make, so let me know before I start what you think is going to be on this list. I would love to see if you guys know what my favorites are. You probably know some of them, honestly. Like, if you don't write one of these that I talk about literally nonstop all the time, I'd be surprised. So the first one is the one I read the, like, longest time ago, and that is The Highwayman by Kerrigan Byrne, and this one will always be a favorite. It was one of my favorites of 2020, unless I read this in 2019. I was just getting into historicals when I read this, and I heard everybody loved it. Kerrigan Byrne says it's, like, her peak book. Like, this is her, everyone loves it, and it is so, so good. Her romances are pretty dark in the beginning, so our heroine, something happens to her, and the love of her life, as a child, like, they're just, like, they know they're in love and they love each other, um, ends up having to go to a work camp and dies, and so she takes on his last name and acts as a widow for the rest of her life until we meet her, like, I don't remember how old she is, but until we meet her in the present, so everyone thinks she's a widow, so she kind of gets more freedom. She has a job, and someone comes and steals her away. It's a highwayman, and they have to go to Scotland, and the story goes from there, and it is so good. I honestly don't remember a lot of the plot anymore like the specifics, so I do have the audio out on my library to try to reread this before I read The Duke for the Victorian Rebels read-along that my friends are hosting because I'm going to be joining them for that live show on Saturday, but this one was just so, so good, and it was one of the first historical romances that I absolutely fell in love with, so I'm definitely reading, reading this soon, but it is without a doubt a favorite. So some of these are also favorites that weren't all-time favorites when I read them, but the more I think about them and talk about them, I'm like, oh my gosh, no, that was a favorite. So this one is In Bed with a Highlander by Maya Banks. This one just gave me a lot of Outlander vibes because our heroine is rich and she recently came into money, and so people are trying to marry her and force her into marriage so that they can take her money. It's either her money or her land. I don't remember which one, but she then is kidnapped, and she's kidnapped with this little boy, and this little boy is like, don't worry, my own uncle's gonna save us. I'm pretty sure it's his uncle. And his uncle is the laird of a clan, and he ends up saving him and saving her because she's been so nice to the boy. And in order to protect her and save her, they enter into a marriage of convenience, but they hate each other, and she will not listen to him. She does a lot of things that she thinks is right, that he is like, stop doing that. And she's like, I'm not gonna let you walk all over me. So I got a lot of Claire vibes from her. That's why I say it reminds me of Outlander, but this was so good. I need to reread this as well, but I do remember the plot more so than The Highwaymen, but such a good Highlander romance. Then a recent one I read is The Sum of All Kisses by Julia Quinn. This is book three in the Smythe Smith Quartet series, and it is just perfection. So our hero is injured in a duel, and so he does have a limp, and he has to walk with a cane, and he just really feels defeated because of it. Like, he can't be a man. He can't protect his woman, even, like, carry her. And so he ends up having a romance with our heroine, who is a Smythe Smith child. She hates him, she blames him for something, and when they meet, she's like, tells him why, and he's like, that's not my fault, but they end up having to spend a lot of time together at a wedding. She's kind of put to keep him company, and they fall for each other, and they have to go, like, on a log carriage ride together, and they start really liking each other and talking to each other, and she just genuinely wants to know about his injury and about how to help him and not feeling like it's, like, a burden or feeling sorry for him, so it was adorable. I really, really love this one. It was hate to love. There's a lot of forced proximity. I love the heroine's family in this, so definitely a new favorite of mine. Another surprise and a new favorite, because I hadn't heard a lot of people talk about this before I read it, and that is Nine Rules to Break When Romancing a Rake, and we have the gorgeous step back on the inside. This is by Sarah McLean. I believe this is her first adult historical romance that she wrote, but it's so good. So Serafina, she goes by Sarah, has a list of things she wants to do because she is a spinster. Her sister is madly in love with some guy. I think he might be a duke. I don't remember. He's a titled man. And so she decides she wants to do all these things. She wants to drink. She wants to go shooting. She wants to see a duel. And so she decides to do that. And the rake, he's a Marquess and 
he kind of ends up helping her without meaning to achieve all these tasks and like she'll she wants to fence and like at one point she runs into him and they just keep on falling into each other's paths and she also has promised to help his sister who is uh his half sister from italy come out into society as well so they're around each other a lot and it is such a good romance oh my goodness so so good a very pleasant surprise and I, you all have to read it another one that i talked about a ton last year is Her Night with the Duke by Diana Quincy. This one, I just read it at a time where I was just like really wanting a good historical romance and so I absolutely adored it and fell in love with it. Our heroine is a widow and she is at this inn and there's really no room for her and all the guys are being gross and like, oh, share with me. But then this Duke is like, hey, we'll share a room and they spend a steamy night together and then she realizes that the Duke is actually intended to marry her stepdaughter who is really her best friend because they're really close in age. She loves to travel. She writes about her travel. She doesn't want to get tied down. So, and she's like, she, her stepdaughter really needs to marry a duke, marry well. And so she's kind of trying to displace her feelings and let them continue to court. But she, of course, is still in love with the duke. And there's a lot of groveling in here, which I loved at the end. So much groveling. Hi, Lily. Of course, she brought her ball. We haven't seen Lily's ball in a while. Hi, baby. I couldn't recommend this enough. One of my favorites. So good. I'll get the other obvious one out of the way. It's The Madness of Lord Ian McKenzie. You guys know how much I adore this book. Ian is on the autism spectrum. Beth is a widow and he decides that he likes Beth and wants to start a physical relationship with her and then they fall for each other and it is just amazing. I love the family in here. Ian's three other siblings get books. The first four books in here are my absolute favorite and I cannot get enough of Ian. This is another one I want to reread soon because I remember bits and pieces but I don't remember completely everything that happened so I need to reread this soon but it is so good and I loved it so if you haven't read the series yet you have to. Then another one I read recently is If the Duke Demands by Anna Harrington. This one Lisa told me to read and I didn't listen for months and I finally picked it up and it was amazing. I had to take your ball, sorry. It reminded me of a bunch of Bridgerton books put together. So our hero, he needs to get married and he's looking for a respectable lady to get married to and the heroine grew up with her family but she is like lives with the farmers next door or something so she's not high class. She's in love with the hero's brother and so she decides to seduce him and ends up going into the wrong bedroom and attempting to seduce the wrong brother and doesn't realize it until after they've shared a passionate kiss because they're wearing masks, so there's a masquerade. And so they're like, uh-oh. And so he actually promises to help her court his brother if she helps him find a respectable wife. And then his mother decides to kind of sponsor her, I guess, and help her have a season because she's not wealthy. And so then she has a season and they dance around each other and it's adorable. So it kind of reminds me of a few of the different Bridgerton books. And it's amazing. I absolutely love it five out of five stars there were parts where she was like kind of like no but I love the brother she's like no but I really want to dance with the other guy and then the brother like that she's in love with could care less about her and it was so sad how the hero was just like feeling so bad for her and he knew he had to marry wealthy and he's like but it could never work with someone of lower class because he's the duke because he used to be a playboy and he was off with a woman when his dad died so now he's like I gotta be on the straight and narrow and he's really affected by that so it reminded me a lot of the Bridgertons but it was so good highly recommend this book then I have The Secret by Julie Garwood this one is another Highlander romance fabulous our heroine is British and she has a best friend who she met on the border who is Scottish and her best friend scared of having a baby because both her mother and her grandmother did pass away from childbirth so she promised to be there for that birth and her best friend is pregnant and so the laird of the clan ends up coming to find her and take her back and they hate each other at first and they fall for each other and she actually like studies to be a midwife which is really cool so she helps other women in the clan while she's waiting for her friend to give birth and it was great I loved it and I need to read the next book because it's on my TBR this month and I hopefully I can, but I really love this one. We had to have Beverly Jenkins on here. So we have Destiny's Surrender and this is book two in the Destiny series. This is Andrew and Billy's book. Billy is actually a sex worker and she and Andrew really, really like each other, but of course they can never be together and she becomes pregnant and she shows up and because she's in danger of something and so she shows up and the romance goes from there. It was just so good. I loved Billy. I loved the, the surprise pregnancy trope when that, I normally hate that trope, but I really loved this. Favorite in the series, one of my favorite Beverly Jenkins books, so I could not recommend her books enough, but definitely recommend reading this one. And my last one, I own a physical copy of and for the life of me cannot find it on my bookshelves. And I don't know if I moved it. 
but it's it's not there. So it is Sea of Ruin by Pam Godwin. This is a dark historical romance and it is a pirate romance and it is a love triangle. Our heroine is actually a pirate captain. She is married to a, another pirate but they are on the rocks because he cheated on her and then she gets kidnapped by a commodore who is a pirate hunter and has a romance with him and it's amazing. It's very dark. She does get a lot of assault and sexual assault happen to her so know that going in that this is a dark romance but I absolutely loved it. I love pirate romances and this took place almost entirely at sea so I really loved it. Excuse Lily's tail. I took her ball so now she wants to sniff everything around me. But those are my top 10 historical romances that I have read. Let me know down below what your favorites are. If you leave me like your one favorite, maybe I will look at this video comments and do a video reading your favorite historicals. So let me know your favorites down below that you want me to read. But that's all I have. As always, thank you so much for watching. Have a good day. Bye.